All right, yesterday we looked at a little short video about translation. So the key thing is it just slides the figure. So what we're going to do now is we're going to plot shapes, triangles, squares, rectangles, whatever. And then we're just going to slide them from one location to the next. This image that we have here, let's see if I can get this board to work. This image is our pre-image. It's the one that doesn't have the little apostrophes in it. Then this image is our image. So this is our original, and this is what we want to go to. Now, if you notice, I handed you the notes, and there are four ways to do these problems. You have to do a verbal, which is like a one-sentence statement. Then you have to plot your points and write your points. Um, you have to make a rule for it, and you have to make a graph. So we're going to do those four things for every problem, and we're going to mix it up. I might give you the rule, I might give you the points, I might give you the verbal. So we're just mix up what we're doing. All right. So here's the first one. Given uh, now, I didn't actually put a shape on here, so I'm going to draw a shape real quick. It should be a triangle there. The given triangle ABC, A is negative one one, B is two four. C is 4, 1. Translate, another word for translate is slide, left 4 units and up 1 unit. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make a graph because if I'm giving points, I can plot those points pretty easily, right? So let's do that. Let's go ahead and plot our points. I'll make this big. Now remember, when you plot your point, go ahead and put a letter with it too. That way you know what point you plotted. So I plotted point A, negative 1, 1. And you guys did great on plotting points yesterday. Um, so I don't think that we need to review that too much. And then we're going to connect those three together to make our triangle. And since we have these new boards, kind of, you know, we got them right at the end of last semester, I'm still new to writing on here, so just bear with me as we go through some of these. But there's our triangle, right? Everybody's good? Okay, now, this triangle is going to translate or slide left four units and then up one unit. You can do this one vertex at a time because triangle has the three points that are your vertices. So if I take point A, I'm going to go left four, one, two, three, four, and then up one. And this is my new A, so I'll put a little apostrophe on it. We actually call it A prime. In math, the apostrophe means prime. You know, might as well throw in some new words. So A prime. Now do the same thing with B and C. So I'm going to move left four and up one. So all of them go left four units and up one. Exactly. All the dots go left four. Do I go left four? One, two, three, four. Yeah. All the dots go left four and up one. So see how it looks like, I know my shape doesn't look exactly the same, but maybe it's my drawings. But see how it looks like I just shifted the whole thing left four and up one? Did I plot my points right? I think the A is Did I not count right? One, two, three. Oh, biscuits and gravy. This is what happens. Okay, now where's my stuff? What? This is why I'm not using this board yet. I did put A in the wrong spot. Just expand it a little bit. Thanks, Aaron. Y'all gotta catch me. Sometimes I can't count. One, two, three, four, and up one. There's A. I thought it looked a little funny. Okay, so there we go. Now there's A, B, and C. Now I did it right? Okay. Yeah. Mess up on the first problem. So now that we have our new shape, now we can write our coordinates. Since I gave you the original coordinates, you don't have to write those down again. Just write the coordinates that are new. So what are the coordinates of A prime? So you don't have to write the original? No. Since they're already given, just um, write the new one. Negative 5, 2. Negative 5, 2. 
and B prime. Negative 2, and then it would be 5. Negative 2, 5. And C prime? Zero two. 0, 2. Everybody agree on those three points? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we have our verbal statement, we have our graph, we have our coordinates, because it gave us the original coordinates. Don't worry about writing those again. You can just write the new ones the image, and now we have to write a rule. Now, I don't work, know if you remember yesterday from the video, but the rule, they said, is a mapping rule. You put X, Y in parentheses, and then you put an arrow. So, what's happening to X as we go from one to the other? It's going left four. It's going left four. So, Jay, what were you going to say? X minus four. Anytime you move to the left, you minus the number. So, what's happening to our Y coordinate? Plus, plus, one. plus one, we would say y plus one. Very good. Does that make sense? Yeah. Good. Will it always give you the, um, like the left and the where to go? No. So, each problem is going to be different. Like most of the time, you're given the original coordinates and rule, like this one or the verbal part. And then I want you guys to fill in the rest. But sometimes I give you like just the coordinates or just the graph, and you kind of have to figure it out from there. So let's look at our next problem. Our next problem gives us coordinates. So what should we do? Graph them. So let's graph those uh, six coordinates. So it's definitely going to be two triangles here. And don't forget to label them. This is a good time, too, if you guys like different colors. Uh, you can use different colors. And some people also like to shade them in, too. So if there's like the original image, you can leave plain and then shade in the new one. I have a question about, so we have to, you always have to write it like that. We're fine. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Now, you can probably figure out what's going on with this one from looking at the graph and some of you might just look at the coordinates and be like hey what's happening as I go from X to X what's happening as I go from Y to Y but some of us look at the graph I know I'm more of the visual person I like seeing the graph um, but some of my friends that I had they like looking at just the coordinates so anybody got a clue of what's going on here with our coordinate points So X is going left three, and then Y is going down one. Everybody agree? Yeah. Okay, good. So that's our rule. Let's Wait, go ahead so and write that over. How did you find that? Did you just count? Yeah, just count. Mm -hmm. And you can also look at these coordinates. Like, what's happening between these two? Oh. Okay. How do I get from this number to this number? Okay. I'm minus and three. Am I doing that every time? Yes. And then, how am I getting from this number to this number? I'm minus and one, and I'm doing that every time. So my rule is x, y, arrow. Then I would say x minus three, and y minus one. Now we're gonna write our verbal statement similar to the one above, but we're gonna cut out some stuff to make it easier for us. We don't have to say the original coordinates when we write the verbal statement but you do need to use the word translate. So since both of these were triangles, we're going to start with saying triangle ABC is translated 
And then how is it translated? Left three and down one unit. So left three units, down one unit, and there's our new triangle. So the one above said like given triangle ABC with vertices at da 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 da. Just skip all that part. Just start with saying triangle ABC is translated this way, that way. Um, hold on one second, sorry. Hello? Okay, bye Lucas. <laughs> sorry, my mom was calling and I thought it was important. It's my two year old son calling me. <laughs> Sometimes he picks up the phone and calls people and he was like, Hey, bye, 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 bye. Like that's all he really says. But you can tell he says hey very clearly. But I heard my mom yelling in the background, what are you doing? Hang up, she's at work, she's at work. <laughs> it's always chaotic at our houses. It's chaotic at anybody else's houses? Okay, yeah. yeah. All right, y'all get it. All right, let's move on to our next problem. You guys flip it over to the back. Now this one gives us what? The graph. Yeah. Gives us the graph, right? Now, be careful on this one. Which one is your pre-image? Uh, the one with W. Yes, this one is our pre-image. So this one is our starting point. We start here and then go to this one, which is our image. So the one without the little apostrophes, without the little primes, pre-image to image. So first thing that I would probably do is write the coordinates because you got the points there, got everything there that you need. I usually write them in order, you know, alphabetical order. So start with E. What are the coordinates of E? Um, five, five, three. About three. F. Five, six, four. Six, four. G. Seven, three. Seven, three. And H. Six, one. Six, one. I like it when it has my numbers here, too. It makes it a lot easier, right? You don't have to really count, so I don't mess up as much. Okay, let's go with E prime. One six. One six. F prime. Two seven. Two seven. G prime. Three six. And H prime. Two four. Two four. Good. Now you can either go verbal statement or a rule here, but look at your coordinates, look at your graph. How do we move from one to the other? Um, left, one, left, left four. Left four? Up three? Up three? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Left four, up three? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start with my verbal statement. Now this is obviously not a triangle, is it? No. Because we haven't gotten into specific types of shapes yet, so this is could it be three to six. That would be uh, no, it's three to six. I cannot read the one. <laughs> yeah, sorry, that's a three. <laughs> so um, when you are writing this, since we don't know exactly what kind of four-sided shape it could be, is it a rhombus? Is it a kite? Whatever we call it, a quadrilateral. And you could just say quad if you want to. Um, I'm going to write out the whole word for this problem, but I'll write quad for the next few. But if it's a four-sided shape, say quadrilateral. So quadrilateral, E, F, G, H. I need to learn how to pick up my pen better. I'm sorry. It kind of like runs together. Um, and it is translated. Good. What did we say? Left. Left four and up three units. And how did you get that? So if we look at going, I like to look at the graph on this one. I start with like this point. How did this point move? It moved to the left four and then up three. And then you can also do the coordinates if you want to. 
So what's happening as we move from like five to one? We go minus four, minus four, minus four, minus four, and then the y's, I add three. So our rule would be x, y goes to y plus three. Good. So anytime I want to move to the left, I put a minus with the x coordinate. Anytime I want to move up, I put a plus with the y coordinate. What if I wanted to move to the right? Then it would be plus four and minus three. Yeah, it would be plus four for the x, right? What if I wanted to move down? It'd be minus three for the y. Good. So make sure, because you might see a problem like this on your quiz, hint, hint, that you have to pick out which one is the image and the pre-image, and so how do you move from one to the next? All right, last translation problem. We are given the rule and half of the coordinates. So it'd probably be a good idea to write the verbal statement. We could write the verbal statement from this rule, right? Yeah. Now, how many coordinates do we have? It would be the quad. It'd be the quad, yeah, because we have four. So quadrilateral, A, B, C, D, Translates how? Right to my down to the end. Good. Right to because the x plus 2 and then? Down to units. Down to units because we have the y minus 2. So if you wanted to write a little shortcut, which you guys could write this on your notebook paper if you wanted to, to kind of keep a kind of guide, a list. If we do x plus a number, we're going to move right. If I do x minus a number, I move left. If I do y plus a number, and y minus a number, there you go. So y'all got the pattern. So this is just a little shortcut pattern in case you want to write that down maybe on your notebook paper or at the top of this paper. Just a, a good reminder. And this is how we translate. So this is just the sliding part. Now we're going to talk about multiple transformations that you can do. We're going to talk about rotations, reflections, and dilations. So there are four main types that you can go through. So translations is our first main type. Do y'all remember doing this back in middle school or math one? Yes. Okay. All right, good. I was about to say it should be a review, but if you don't remember, that's okay. All right, let's look at our rule. Our rule is telling us that we're moving plus right two, minus two down two. Yep, so we plus two for every x value that we have. So this point zero, zero would change to Good, because we add 2 and minus 2. Now, we don't have the coordinates of point B, so let's move to point C and do the same thing. Add 2 and minus 2, I go to what coordinate? 2, 0. 2, 0. Add 2, minus 2, 2, 0. So if I'm going this direction, I add to the X, I minus to the y. But now I have the image point. How do I get the pre-image point? You do the inverse. You do the inverse. And inverse is just really the opposite. opposite. So what's the opposite? Uh, minus 2 plus 2. Good. I'm going to minus 2 here and plus 2 here because i got to go backwards. Does that make sense? Sorry, I'm confused. Yeah. So it goes from well, if it's right to and down to, why does it go from, because B should be 2, negative 2, so why is C 0? And I'm confused on my word. Okay, so here we have, these are our, um, ooh, don't do that. <laughs> I didn't know that would do that, I'm sorry, that was really confusing. Okay, these points right here, oh goodness gracious, undo. It went back to the wrong thing. Let me highlight. I think that'd be easier. 
these points. Stop it. I'm sorry. I was like yell at my board. Okay. These points are our pre-image points, right? So we're going to use this rule to get our new points. So we're adding 2 to the x and then minus 2 to the y. Now, these points, though, are these. That's part of this. How do I go from here backwards? Wouldn't it be uh, 2 minus and 2 plus? Yeah. So minus 2 and then plus 2, right? Do yes. the opposite. So, oh gosh, why are you doing that? All right, so now we are going to stop it. Come here. I just don't understand the whole like opposite thing. Well, we want to get our original image. Oh, so you're not doing uh, plus two minus two on A, but you're doing it on. Um, I'm doing it on A and C to get A prime and C prime. Okay, so you're doing that to get A prime and C prime. Yeah. Okay. Now, now how do I get, to get B below A? Yeah. Which so one's the original? These are all the original, without the little marks. They're all the pre-image. Oh, so then you're going back to the... Yes. Okay. Yeah. So now we're just going backwards. So to go backwards, I minus 2, so I get 2, and then I add 2, which would make 0. And then minus 2, and add 2. Oh. So you're kind of thinking to yourself too, what do they need to be originally to make my new one? How would that shift go? Yes, you can. Any other questions? Everybody making sense now? I just want to make sure. So when you're trying, okay, so because you don't have B and D for the pre-image, you're going to find uh, image A and C by doing the rule, but in order to go back and find B and D, you have to do it first. Yes. It's kind of like so, Optimus Prime. You know, he's like a transformer, and then he has to revert back into car form. Oh my God. You have to do the inverse. There you go. You get it Prime. That's right. Uh, <laughs> I like it. Prime. All right, plot all these points. And don't forget to label them. Wait, so the ones on the left is the pre image? Yes. So we got a little square there. That one's definitely a square. Yep, the ones without the mark are always the pre -image. So the new image. And we can say, hey, do all of these points move right to and down to? So let's see. Two to negative two. Yep, A prime did. Two is four, negative two. Now notice that C prime and B are actually the same point, right? And that's okay. You might have some points that overlap, but is it still the same shift in the shape? Did the shape slide right to, down to? Yeah, so we know that we did it right. That's a good way to double check. And if you like to draw the shape first and then, you know, write the coordinates later, you can do that. You can skip. It doesn't matter what order you do these in. All right, we are going to go to our second worksheet now that you have, and we're actually going to change up the transformation that we're doing. This one is all about dilation. Has anybody had their eyes dilated before? Yeah, some of you've gone to the eye doctor. So what happens when you dilate your eyes? Your eyes uh, get freaking big and you have to wear those stupid shoes. <laughs> yeah, your pupils get really big and they make you put on some sunglasses because you are sensitive more to the bright lights because the bigger your pupils are, the more light that comes in. So when you dilate something, you end up making it bigger or you could make it smaller. So a translation is where we just slide the figure around. We just move it left, right, up, down. But a dilation, it's going to change shape. Okay? So let's look at dilations next. This is something that you might want to write down on your notebook paper, or you can write it down at the top of this uh, worksheet that you have, either one, whichever one you prefer. 
And we just got three more examples we are going to do about dilations. It's used a lot in photography, of course, like when you take a picture, you can zoom in and out. And it's used on the graphing calculator, if y'all have used that before, or Desmos, when you can zoom in and out. That's also considered a dilation. That's not on our notes, is it? It's not, no. So you write it down, you can put it down on your notebook paper or the top of the next page. Now the rules for dilation, there are actually two rules that you can use and then there is a third one that's a little bit different. But with a dilation, the typical rule is you're going to be multiplying by what's called a scalar. So both vertices or both coordinates are going to multiply by maybe this letter K and you can put it out in front or you could put it with both of the variables. Do you put that uh, in the thing that says rules or rule? Is that a rule? Yeah, this is the rule. Now, K could be any number, where K is whatever number you have. So K could be 2, it could be 4, it could be 18, it could be 0.5, any number that you have. increase the figure. It's going to make it large. If K is between 0 and 1, it's going to shrink it. We're not going to look at negatives quite yet. So we're just going to look at positive values of K. So anything between 0 and 1 is going to shrink it. Anything more than 1 is going to make it grow. Alright, so let's look at our examples. Everybody got this written down? Okay. So our first example, we are given the verbal statement um, triangle ABC has those coordinates and we dilate by a scale factor of 2. So that is the key words there. When you're looking, hey, what do I write down? You're going to be dilating by a scale factor of, and then whatever the number is, is your multiplier. So let's go ahead and write, do y'all have this one down? Yeah, okay. So let's go ahead and write the rule for this. XY goes to 2XY. You can put the 2 in front or you could say 2X, 2Y, whichever one your brain likes best. Now, since we have the original coordinates, let's just write the new coordinates. What would A prime be? Wait, how did you? You can say it either way. Well, I meant like either way. I don't understand how you got that. If you, based on the rule, the rule said dilate by a scale factor. So anything that says dilate, we multiply. Oh, so it would be 6, um, negative 2. Yes, for coordinate A prime. Because you just multiply both. So anytime you see that keyword dilate, they multiply. So you multiply for A, you would multiply 2 times 3, 2 times 6, 1. Exactly. You got it. So coordinate B prime would be? 0, 8. Zero, 8. And then uh, negative 4 and 2. Negative 4 and 2 for C prime. So all the coordinates get multiplied by 2, the X's and the Y's. And now we're ready to graph. Remember you want to graph both. Do we graph the original first? It doesn't matter. Well, do they have to be graphed? 
Yeah, you might graph both, but it doesn't matter which one you graph first. Sometimes some lines may overlap some points or connect or whatever. Again, if you want to use two different colors, you can, but as long as you're labeling correctly, you're fine. Some people like to shade, again, the original image, and you can choose whatever you want. But see how it looks like somebody just kind of went in with and expanded it? And that's just what happened. You just like, like the two <laughs> I remember when my mom first got her iPhone and my daughter was like two years old we let our kids play on homes you know we're not one of those no technology people they always play on homes but she went through and was like looking at a photograph and she zoomed in and my mom goes how did you do that and I was like are you seriously asking a two-year-old how they zoomed in on your picture and she was like yes how did she do that it was so funny I was like you just went through any questions on this? You guys good with this? Dilations, I think, are some of the easiest. Now, a dilation is the only transformation that changes the shape size. With translation, we just slide it so it doesn't change the size of the figure. But a dilation changes the size. It either blows it up or shrinks it down. All right, let's do our next problem then. And the next problem, what are we given? Coordinates. Coordinates. So you can go either way. What do you want to do first? Grab them? Yeah, okay, let's grab them. Anybody know what kind of shape that is? Quadrilateral. It's a quadrilateral. Uh, basically, it's a trapezoid. Because we can see the top and bottom are parallel. It's a trapezoid. Either way. All right, I'm going to graph the next one in a different color so that way maybe we can see it better. Would we still mark it as a quadrilateral? Yeah. Okay. I mean, if you, if you called it a trapezoid, I mean, I wouldn't count you wrong. Because it's definitely a trapezoid. Yeah, well, yeah, go ahead. And there's some Kleenexes in the back. You can steal those when you go out. Um, now, when you do like halfway points, just go halfway. So negative four and a half, and then positive one and a half would be right there in the middle of that box. For A, three is possible, right? It is. So when you go up with your A prime, Oh, three was supposed to be negative. Oh, that's my bad. I hope y'all use pencils. <laughs> three was supposed to be negative. I'm sorry. Thank you for saying that, Brady, because I, I was. was trying to graph it all the time. Where is this point going? Like a shape <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was supposed to be my my bad. Yeah, supposed to be negative. Fix that. The um, a prime supposed to be a negative three. That would definitely make it a whole totally different shape. How do you do the 4.5? Um, just go halfway. So go to 4 and then halfway and then go up 1 and halfway again. Even 
So the three will be in the middle? Yep. Mm-hmm. It's going to be in the middle. And with this, we can definitely tell the shape wasn't slid any kind of way. It was expanded a little bit, right? So it's definitely some kind of dilation. So think about maybe how do you go from one point to the next. Remember, dilation is a multiplication problem. Y'all got ideas? I can tell y'all are itching to say it. Go ahead. Is it 1.5? Do we multiply by 1.5? What do y'all think? Yeah, I see a lot of you agreeing. Yeah, good. And I like to look at numbers that are very simple, like the number one. What would you multiply by one to make 1.5? Well, you would multiply by 1.5. Are all these coordinates being multiplied by 1.5 to make all of these coordinates? Yes. yes, they are. And I'm going to pass out calculators today. Y'all could double check that and make sure, but that is true. Wait, so how do you know it's 1.5? You just pick a number and kind of guess and check to see. I always like to start with one. One times what is 1.5? Oh, okay. 1.5. So that's usually the easiest one to tell. So, what does that do? Hmm? What is doing that to? It just expands, it enlarges oh. our shape. So let's go with our rule. We would say x, y goes to. 1.5 parentheses x comma y. Or you could say 1.5 x comma 1.5 y. So let's do our verbal statements. Would it be the, I like how you use dilated by a scale factor of. We're going to talk about scale factors a lot in the next unit. So we need to use that terminology to kind of get used to it, you know, what's going on. So we're dilating because we enlarge the image. How much do we enlarge the image by? 1.5. All right, one last problem. Woohoo! Oh, stop. I don't know how to work my board. Plus, y'all see these like tiny little things down here? Like, how are we supposed to hit those? I'm trying. Okay, now this rule, we're given a rule, but it's a bit different, huh? What's going on on this rule? Yeah, the y coordinate is not changed. The x is multiplied by 4. This is something you might want to add to on your notebook paper, or you could add it here as well. If you only multiply x, Well, we call it, um, you, if you only multiply x, you're only changing the independent variable. So you dilate the independent variable. So if you only multiply the x, we call it dilating the independent variable. What do you think we say if we only multiply y? Yes. Sorry, my handwriting is terrible on here too. I'm just not used to it yet. So this may be a rule that you see or a statement that I might make and I might say only dilate the dependent variable by 2. So that means x stays the same and you would have 2y. So when I'm looking at this problem, what would be my verbal statement for this one?
Yeah, so I would just say dilates the independent variable. By two, no, by four. Yep. The independent, that's a long word. By a scale factor of four. Because only the x value is changing, so we have to make sure we say that in our verbal statement. Quadrilateral A, B, C, D dilates the independent variable by scale factor of four. Nothing changes with the y. Oh, because the rule said four, four x. So all of the y values will stay the same if you wanted to go ahead and write those in. So point A is 0, 4, so A prime is something 4. And point D is telling us the y value is 6, so all the y values are the same. You could just copy them from left to right and right to left. The y values don't change. But the x values, when we go from pre-image to image, the x values get bigger. bigger. They get multiplied by 4, right? But can we change 0? No. No, so leave it at 0. Now, I'm going to skip down to point D. Negative 2 would change to? Negative 8. Negative 8. But how do we go backwards? You would divide. You would divide by 4. So if B prime is 8, B is? 2. two. Because 2 times 4 is 8. This might be a little tricky. <coughs> Wait, so you do negative 8 divided by 4. Or Are you talking about point B? Uh, I'm talking about point B. Yeah, you could do negative 8 divided by 4 is negative 2 if you wanted to go backwards. Wait, I'm confused. So if I'm going from here to here, <coughs> I'm going to multiply by 4. But if I go from here to here, I'm going to. Uh, you're going to multiply by four. You're going to divide four. Okay. So if I go from, it's just like this statement here. This is the original to the new. I'm going to multiply by four. But if I'm going backwards, I have to undo it and reverse it. So when you okay. divide it by four, does the answer go on uh, pre-image D or like? Uh, image C. Like if you do uh, negative 8 divided by 4, does it, would it like go into negative 2 on the C on top of it? It's got to stay with the same coordinate point. Okay. So D to D, C to C. So what am I going to say for regular C? Negative 0.5 or negative 1 half. Yep, you got it. Because negative 2 divided by 4 would look like this, reduce it, negative one half, right? All right, let's plot our points real quick and then we'll get our homework. So A and A prime are on the same point. That's kind of neat. shape but A, B, C, D and then connect back to A. Did I plot those right? Y'all let me know if I did. Okay, that's good. <laughs> You're like, that's what I got. But, <laughs> who knows? Maybe we both counted wrong. <laughs> mm, I kind of drew it and it kind of looks like a banana. So, uh, <laughs> me too. I mean, we, we all see my fish. <laughs> We all saw more fish. You're so crazy. Yeah. Negative eight. One, two, three, four.
It does make a very interesting shape if you only change the x coordinate, right? <laughs> Let's hope we all did it right. <laughs> while you guys are finishing plotting because this is our last one. Um, your homework is this worksheet. Now the first four problems, I'm basically giving you the rule and you have to write the coordinates of the image. So this is the new coordinates. Graph both and then write the X, Y rule with the arrow. Um, then the bottom problem here, number six, it says describe the translation. Anytime I say describe, write the verbal sentence. Write one sentence. And then write the algebraic rule. The algebraic rule is with the arrows. Okay? So rule has arrows. Describe means a sentence. And then you got a few problems to do on the back. You need one piece of graph paper to do these. So if you don't have graph paper, you can get it off the box in the back. <laughs> 